Council and all those that are, are busy uh, working to make the city a, a great city. Put your hand upon our police department, Lord. They are so important, uh, and when things happen, they call for them. And uh, they are to serve and protect, but many things are happening, D diversities of places, keep them safe as they are out there. Our fire department, our schools, Lord, our district, Lord God, and our children that are out there, Lord, just, just help them to grow strong in you Give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding in our city, our community, Lord, that we'll walk, work and walk hand in hand with one another to promote a beautiful city called Baldwin Park. All right, thank you very much. At this point, we'll face the flag. Place your right hand over your heart. Repeat after me. This Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you. I want to say, first of all, good evening to everyone that is present today at the City Council. Of course, we're going to be acknowledging uh, several outstanding uh, individuals that represent the City of Baldwin Park. I want to also extend, uh, extend, extend an appreciation for the veterans that are here today. Thank you very much, and thank you for the service. Uh, that, and, and for your contribution to this country, because we are obviously sitting here, uh, and we represent, of course, uh, this community, but it's all based on the fact that you were out serving our country, preserving our, our, our freedom. So thank you very much on behalf of the City of Baldwin Park. All righty, so at this point, we're going to, Council Members, wishing to close, yes, we have our City Treasurer. I'm just take roll call. Yes, roll call, that's right, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Buenas noches a todos, and welcome to our meeting. Councilmember Cruz Baca? Here. Councilmember Monica Garcia? Here. Councilmember Susan Rubio? Present. Vice Mayor Ricardo Pacheco? Present. Mayor Manuel Lozano? Present. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Council members, have any comments or anything they wish to share? Yes. Yes. Uh, Councilmember Susan Rubio? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to close on behalf of someone that's so dear, I believe, too. Well, myself personally, but I know that we've all grown to know him. Uh, Mr. Nixon passed oh. last oh, night. Wow. Uh, Mr. Nixon is a staple in our community. He was um, a school board member, water board member for 25 years. Concurrently, this is a man of service. He also served our country. And uh, his wife is uh, part of our community as well. She belongs to the Women's Club. And and so my heart breaks for her because we have such a nice friendship. And so my condolences go to the family. We're thinking of them. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I just want to share that I met uh, uh, Mr. Nixon back when I moved in, actually, 19, 1979. Uh, what a great man. Uh, he was definitely an icon in the city of Baldwin Park. He kept up, and it's amazing that the beautiful life that he had, and our deepest condolences goes out to his family. Uh, he was a very artistic person when it came to carpentry type of things, because he would have all these little kind of windmills and what have you. Uh, so please keep us um, apprised as to the actual, um, the actual funeral services for him. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. All right, anyone else wishes to speak? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Councilmember Cruz Baca. <clears throat> um, about a week or two ago, we also lost Dr. David Hall, that yes. was very instrumental and a okay. trustee for the Mount Sac uh, School Board. Mm -hmm. um, uh, anybody who knew Mr. Hall, or Dr. Hall knew how he touched everybody's lives. Yes. In so many ways, he was so positive and really gave back to all of our communities. So our condolences go out to uh, Dr. David Hall's family as well. Yes, very well noted. Council Member? Uh, no, I was just going to close on his behalf as well. All righty. Okay, very good. Yes, and a lot yeah. of new David Hall, a uh, very special friend to the community and member of the Board of Trustees uh, at Mount San Antonio College. Yes. Yeah. yes. I would also like to close in memory of Raymond Chavez. He was from former council member from Irwindale. Oh, yeah. Oh, Mr. G really? Wow. Yes. Wow. Okay. Our condolences. The services will be on Monday. On Monday? Okay. All right. We would send a letter out uh, to uh, the Chavez family as well and the individuals that we just mentioned at this point. All right. So at this point, uh, we'll go over to the items uh, that we have. We have various presentations. And some of the first ones that we have, we'll go 
over to the uh, proclamation recognizing uh, May as Older American Month. So do we have that proclamation? So we'll have uh, Council Member Monica Garcia read the first one. There's enough for the council members to read. So do you want to go ahead and read Older that? Older Americans. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yes, so I'd like to uh, present this proclamation, Older Americans Month. Um, the theme is Engage at Every Age for May 2018. Whereas older Americans are among our greatest treasures, providing invaluable links to the past and wise counsel for the future. And whereas the gift of longevity will ensure that today's and tomorrow's seniors will continue making significant contributions to our families by giving of themselves freely and by sharing their wisdom and experience. And whereas it is important to acknowledge the contributions older individuals have made to our economic well-being in our communities and in the workplace through civic leadership and mentoring. And whereas the seniors of tomorrow will be increasingly multicultural and multi-generational, more diverse socially, ethically, and economically than past generations, and whereas an expanding elder population will profoundly impact every facet of our lives, redefining our ideas of work, retirement, and leisure, altering our housing and living arrangements, challenging our health care systems, reshaping our economy, and altering social and public policy. And whereas the opportunities and challenges that await as we begin a new chapter in human history require our continued commitment to the goal of ensuring that our senior citizens may enjoy active, productive, and healthy lives and do so independently, safely, and with dignity for as long as they choose. And finally, whereas the Declaration of Older Americans Month coincides with the recognition of May as Older Americans Month by the President of the United States, with this year's national theme being Age Out Loud. Now, therefore, the Mayor Manuel Lozano, along with the Mayor Pro Tem, Ricardo Pacheco, Council Members, um, and City Clerk, as well as a Treasurer, do hereby proclaim May 2008 as Older American Month and urge all residents to participate in appropriate ceremonies honoring these men and women. All right. Thank you. What we'll do at this point, read all the proclamations and have everyone come up for a, for a picture. So at this point, uh, we'll have uh, uh, Councilman Cruz Baca read the next proclamation. Uh, this proclamation is for National Kids to Parks Day, just Saturday, May the 19th. May the 19th, 2018, is the 8th annual National Kids to Parks Day organized and launched by the National Park Trust. National Kids to Parks Day empowers kids and encourages families to get outdoors and visit America's parks. It is important to introduce a new generation to our national parks because of the decline in park attendance over the last decades. And we should encourage children to lead a more active lifestyle to combat the issues of childhood obesity, diabetes, Mellitus, mellitus, hypertension, and hyperclosterolemia. And National Kids to Parks Day is open to all children and adults across the country to encourage a large and diverse group of participants. And whereas National Kids to Parks Day will broaden children's appreciation for nature and the outdoors. Now, therefore, uh, Mayor La Manuel Lozano, Mayor Pro Tem Ricardo Pacheco, Council Members Cruz Baca, Monica Garcia, Susan Rubio, City Treasurer Maria Contreras, and City Clerk Alejandra Avila, do hereby proclaim Saturday, May the 19th, 2018, as National Kids to Parks Day in the City of Baldwin Park, and urge all citizens to support the National Park Trust by participating in outdoor activities at one of our city parks. And I want to thank, of course, our staff and, and, and Parks and Rec that do such a wonderful job with our, our children here in Baldwin Park and, and encourage children to, to go outside and play. Uh, with this new technology, it's very difficult. But I think getting them involved in things that happen at our parks, I think, is, is, is the best way to get them outdoors. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. At this point, we'll have Council Member Susan Rubio. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, today, it gives me great honor to present the Certificate of Proclamation to the City Clerks, um, being City Clerks Week, uh, May 6th to the 12th. Whereas the Office of the City Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of the City Clerk is the oldest among public servants, whereas the Office of the City Clerk provides the professional link between citizens, local government, and agencies of government of other levels, whereas City Clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all, whereas the city clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community, whereas city clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the office affairs, whereas the city clerk, through 
participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, province, county, and international professional organizations, whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of the City Clerk and especially recognize the work of our very own uh, City Clerk, Alejandra Avila, and clerk staff that assist with duties of day-to-day -day services provided to the city departments, residents, and community members. Now, therefore, I'm Manuel Lozano, Mayor of the City of Ballon Park, along with Mayor Pro Tem Ricardo Pacheco, Council Member Chris Baca, Monica Garcia, Susan Rubio, City Clerk Maria Contrera, and City Clerk Alejandra Avila do hereby proclaim May 6 to the 12, 2018 as City Clerk Week and further extend our appreciation to the city's office for the vital services they perform every day. And on a personal note, everyone knows that I was the elected city clerk for four years, so I do recognize all the work that goes into this office. A lot of um, difficult tasks, so we commend you for your work, and please thank your staff. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. This one, we have uh, Vice Mayor Ricardo Pacheco. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Cal Fresh Awareness Month, May 2018, whereas one of the highest priorities of the Los Angeles County is to, I'm sorry, can you guys hear me back there? I'm not sure if this is. Uh, is, is your mic on? It's on, but. Oh, there you go. Okay, it's working now? Okay. Uh, Cal Fresh Awareness Month, May 2018, one of the highest priorities of Los Angeles County is to reduce food insecurity and improving health in the nation's largest populated county by increasing access and participation in the CalFresh program. And whereas food insecurity is defined as the lack of reliable access to a sufficient quantity of affordable, nutritious food, and whereas studies suggest that household hunger negatively impacts the intellect, physical, and emotional development of children and puts them at greater risk and for obesity, diabetes, and other diseases. And whereas the Los Angeles LA County Department of Public Health study on food insecurity confirms that CalFresh serves as a significant resource in the countywide approach to preventing food insecurity, helping low income families and individuals uh, insecure their, uh, increase their food purchase power and raise their levels of nutrition. And whereas in an effort to remove the barriers that discourage residents who are eligible for CalFresh but are not applying, uh, the County Department of Public Social Services has launched an, an aggressive community outreach and social media campaign to increase CalFresh participation. And whereas the County of Department of Public Social Services, Public Health and Health Services, and, uh, and partnering with 88 cities of the county, community, and faith-based partners, uh, community health choices, food insecurity coalitions, a supermar uh, supermarket chains, farmers markets, food banks, and community colleges, university, and school district to enhance outreach for the eighth annual campaign. And now, therefore, uh, Mayor Rosano, Mayor of the City of Ballon Park, including Mayor Pro Tem, Ricardo Pacheco, Council Members Cruz Baca, Monica Garcia, Susan Rubio, City Treasurer Maria Contreras, and City Clerk Alejandra Avila, do hereby join the County of Los Angeles in proclaiming May 2018 as CalFresh Awareness Month and urge all residents to share information about the benefits of CalFresh program and those who desperately need it most. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you, Council Member Ricardo Pacheco. Have the one for Lupus Awareness Month, uh, May 2018. Uh, lupus, <laughs> commonly known uh, excuse me, as an acute chronic uh, complex and often life-threatening um, disease. Researchers est estimate that 5 million people have been diagnosed with lupus or related disease throughout the, throughout the world, and approximately 100,000 more are diagnosed every year. It has been estimated that more than 1.5 million Americans live with some form of lupus, and lupus strikes women of, of childbearing age, and it affects all aspects of their lives. And women of color develop lupus at a, at a rate two to three times the rate that Caucasians develop lupus. Lupus impacts more than just the life of the patient. It affects their, their, their family, friends, coworkers, employers, and the community. And lupus can be particularly difficult to diagnose because its symptoms are, symptom are similar to symptoms of other, of other illness. Early diagnose, diagnosis and proper treatment are, are critical to improvements of the quality of life and survival rate 
of people with lupus. Increased public awareness, education, and research are key to, to winning the battle against lupus. Major gaps exist in the under understanding of the cause and the consequences of lupus. So I want to, we at this point want to acknowledge all the individuals that are here to receive the proclamation. So I will ask the group for the lupus and also the group for uh, the, um, the kids to park day, as well as the CalFresh awareness and the municipal city clerk uh, and also the older American month. So why don't we bring everyone up here as a group for, for a picture? Mayor. Yes. I would also like to acknowledge, um, not only because I see some of the staff from the California Mental Health, Elisa Jimenez and, and her wonderful staff, uh, May is also Mental Health Month. Oh, and I oh, want to acknowledge that as well. Thank you for all you do for our community. Yeah. Thank you. Mayor, Mayor, I also want to um, yes. acknowledge um, a couple of people. Well, first of all, let me go back to the Lupus Awareness Month. I just want to recognize uh, the Mata sisters, who um, Estela and Juana, who have been such advocates. In fact, they just came back from Sacramento, received a proclamation for their work uh, around uh, LA County. So we want to thank them more in particular for taking this on, and thank you for just you know showing your courage. We really appreciate it. Secondly, I also I'm sorry. Can we give them a round of applause, please? Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and I also want to call up the ladies from the mental health um, services. We did have a presentation several weeks back called Wings, Women Encourage, um, Inspiring the Next Generation of Sisterhood. They came over and helped us present to a group of about uh, 50 young ladies. And so I want to recognize them. We have a, also a certificate from the Office of the Assemblywoman. So please do come up so we can recognize you for that work you did. We really appreciate it on behalf of our community. Thank you. All right, do we have the groups? Yes, come on up. I'm going to have a, a Veronica Lopez, who is a field representative for State Assembly member Blanca Rubio, will be re presenting some certificates. Come on up here. Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, like the mayor said, my name is Veronica Lopez, and I represent Assemblywoman Blanca Rubio of the 48th Assembly District. And um, I have three certificates of recognition for uh, Samantha Mena, Elisa Jimenez Hata and Virginia Serrano, 
and it reads, um, I join the city of Baldwin Park and the residents of the 40th Assembly District in thanking you for your participation at the 2018 Wing Summit and command you on your commitment to provide loving support to the youth in our community. Samantha Mena and her um, colleagues are from the California Mental Health Center, which is right across the, across, uh, the park. <laughs> so, um, and we definitely want to thank them for their service. Thank you so much. Oh, we don't? OK. Oh, we'll include you next time. Yes. Here we go. We don't have one. Pleasure, pleasure. All right. Yeah, let's all Con ánimo, con ánimo. Can I ask uh, Concepcion Hidobro to please step up here? Come up here. Pásale para acá, por favor. On behalf of the City Ballpark, we present her with a plaque that represents uh, her, her great job uh, as a volunteer and also assisting not only the, the Senior Citizen Center, but also the Ballpark Unified School District and, of course, BKs as well. Gracias, parte de la ciudad de Ballpark. Gracias. Gracias. Okay. And we also have one also for Eva Navarro. Eva Navarro. Pásale, pásale. I want to thank Eva. If, if, if you don't know Eva, you don't know our Senior Citizen Center in Baldwin Park. So I want to thank her very much, her husband, because they're involved in just about every every aspect in our city. Thank you. Here we go. Oh, thank Pass you. Me. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take one with Eva. Do you have any others? Oh. Oh. Ricardo. Yes. For the two Okay, so. Oh. oh, who's, who's taking the proclamation? Okay, let's get our picture and that photo. Pictures? Okay, let me. Let's all get in here. Oh, sorry about that. Hold on. Thank you. Can you take one more? Yes. Yeah. 
El taconazo. All right, the next one, where it have it? Is it CalFresh? Yes. Okay. Where's the group? CalFresh? Who's taking that one? Okay, one the next more. one that we have. There's one more. Oh, yeah, Lupus. Lupus, yes, come on up. Oh, yes, because I recognize her. How are you? Let's print the certificate. That's right here. Oh, here it is. Right here, I have it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on, come on. Come on, this side. Yes, go off the way. Everybody, we do like the little U. We're organizing everybody. Yes, here we go. Ready? Okay. Oh. Yeah. We're gonna get the camera going. Yeah. Okay. Next Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, the city clerk. Alrighty, Alejandra. Mayor, really quickly, um, I, I failed to, um, I did mention the, the Mata sisters, but all these yeah, women up here are survivors. And so I want to give all of them that came up here a round of applause. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Okay. Okay. okay, now we're recognizing our city clerk. I just want to say we're recognizing the office of the city clerk. There's uh, people up there involved that on a day-to-day -day basis do a lot of work. And um, I wish they were here, but I want to thank them for all the work that they do and for dealing with our community always with a smile. So I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart. You know, I'd like to invite the veterans to come on up so we can get a picture with all of you. You all look wonderful in your hats, and please come on up. Since you're here, we'd love to, to recognize you uh, with a quick photo. Where's the mayor? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
One behind you. Some words? Okay. Go ahead, Commander. I'd like to thank the city of Baldwin Park for hosting us at their McNeil Center. And uh, we'd like to speak to the council later when we have an open forum. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. 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 Thank All righty. Okay. So um, at this point, I'd like to open up the public communication. Anyone wishing to speak, please state your name. You have approximately three minutes. Good evening. Mm -hmm. uh, good afternoon, uh, Mayor, Council Members. I'm here uh, to uh, speak on behalf of my nephew, Daniel Salceda and Daniel Zaragoza. I live at 3600 Van Wig in Ballon Park. And uh, I just want to clarify and make sure, you know, my nephews are both considered uh, what, the, what the law says is 5150s or mentally uh, uh, incapable of taking care of themselves. I asked the city of Ballon Park at this time as a city, I know the state and the county helps, them, helps us out, but I want to bring awareness to this issue. You know, now uh, I, I just want to bring up to issue my, my nephew Daniel on the backside is Ramona Comlin. Now, there's a lot of people in here, but he's gone through traumatic uh, uh, deprimation to the mind. There's been a guy from the, from the convalescent home hung himself on his backyard, of course. I talked to him, uh, uh, which is one of the guys, Mr. Gutierrez, and I did more research, and I did more research, and apparently uh, we had a conflict this day today with my Daniel, which is my nephew, and I love him, and, and, and I just want the support of the city for whatever we could do to help them so they could maintain and be a part of society. I know that I try to control them, I know I try to love them, and I try to give them my heart, but I ask you guys, you know, I know there's an issue, 
with the police department, with the neighbor right now that happened today, an altercation. And I just want the support of the city. I know we got the support of the county, and I know his meds, but I want to bring awareness to uh, mental uh, schizophrenia and, and mental uh, uh, stuff that goes on. I know that a homeless shelter, I got to take him so he can know the difference, where he can be, where he's going to go. And, and, you know, if I don't be his uh, uh, godfather and I don't be his uh, uh, mentor and show him before his mom passes away because he did lose his dad and that's when more of these issues uh, happen. He was a great student at Bowen Park High School. He did a lot of accolades. I can make sure I do the resources to make sure that I bring him to you and tell you, look at how good he was of a student. But that uh, uh, Ramona Comlin really really when I painted his house I seen what was going on the guy was yelling help me help me help me and 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 basically you know I'm painting the house and I'm going man look at what he's going through he was throwing mugs of coffee and I want the police department to also know the chief of police and the mayor if they could help me 3600 Van Wick Avenue right, thank you Eduardo. thank you very much well, at this point I'll refer one of our law enforcement officers to speak to you and I know that we have the uh, the mental health. I don't know that the group has left. If not, if we, if we could provide a referral for you. Okay, so the gentleman, uh, Captain uh, Parnell, will assist you. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right, at this point, we'll move on with public communication. Okay, coming up. That's fine, that's fine. Brand new experience for me. That's fine. Learning Good. protocol at Good age 75. Yep. I'm le learning protocol at 75. Okay. I'm a resident of Baldwin Park, as are my friends. Uh -huh. We all live in the same complex. There's 10 families, 10 units. Through the years, I voted, and I know a lot of you. And now we need help. Our property was recently sold. After we were raised, our rent raised in January by the old owner, $25. Well, $25 is very reasonable. The new owners came in March, and they raised us 40%. My rent went from $11.25 to $15.50. I think there ought to be some reprimand, some provision, something that stops outsiders from coming into Baldwin Park, buying up units and property, and raising rent. This is not, of course, Beverly Hills. And they attached papers to my rent increase for a lot of cities that are, of course, high rent, to show me a comparison. It did no good to me because I don't agree with their, their way. So um, I forgot where I was. What I want to ask is, is this lawful? Can they do this raising you hundreds of dollars each family? It takes my whole security check, and that is all I have. My husband passed away two and a half years ago, so our income was cut in half. I like to maintain where I am, stay where I am if I can, and I was doing fine with 15, less than $1,500, and my rent was 1125 and I was making it. You can budget. You can cut down. You don't have to go, you know, everywhere that you want to go. But the thing is, you can't do it when your rent is higher than your income. They don't understand and they don't care. But we want to know, is there some provision, something that legal help, tenant uh, advocates that can help us have the owners realize what they're doing and forcing all these families out? Um, Also, can the city help relocate some of us, or me, 
or them if they choose to. I don't have a job to rely on. All right. Okay, the time's up. Just want to let you know, we'll refer you over to Susie Rialas from the Housing Department. I'm not certain if she's here this evening. Yes. Oh, she is. Okay. Yes. Uh, we'll refer you over to our Housing Director. Of course, it is very tough, and we know that rent, that rent in general has skyrocketed everywhere, not just in Baldwin Park, and it's a shame, especially if you've been there so many years. But Susie Rialas to the right, or my... Uh, to my right here will assist you and hopefully guide you okay. in the possible see what we can do now our units are 80 years old and they're comparing it to units that are probably 25 mm -hmm. years old oh boy okay and it's not fair that they try to do this to us and is there a provision or a fund to help people there, there are specific laws that homeless? pertain to the, yeah there are specific laws that pertain to renters and the amount the owners could could have uh, 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 impede on a, on a renter so Susie here will assist you. Thanks, Susie Rollins. Thank, right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. At this point, move along with uh, public communication. Good evening. Uh, good evening. My name is Neil Evans. I'm an attorney, and I'm talking with regard to item number 11, uh, having to do with the towing contract. And I realize, and I represent Hadley Towing, and I realize that you uh, have an option on the agenda today to either extend the existing operator who's had the contract for, I guess, about 10 years and give them more time or allow it to go to bid. Uh, we're certainly proposing that the matter should go out to bid. And there's very good public reasons why you should allow something to go out to bid. Competition is obviously the first thing that comes to mind. But you have two very good operators in the city of Baldwin Park, including Hadley Towing, Hadley Towing has three acres of property in your city. It has more trucks, more employees, more facilities, the ability to provide excellent service in the city. And I understand the last time around when this was addressed, four years ago, it was going to be a non-exclusive contract. In fact, there were going to be two operators. That changed at the last minute. Hadley Towing, last, just last night, uh, at the city of El Monte, in the city of El Monte City Council, had the same arguments in reverse, meaning uh, Royal Coaches was trying to come into El Monte. And the interesting thing in that case is that there was a line of people complaining about Royal Coaches. And when it came to the point of making a vote to second a motion to allow Royal Coaches to be the second tow operator in El Monte, there was no second. You have an excellent operator in Hadley Towing, a company that's been in business for decades, a company that can provide excellent service to the city, and if you just extend an existing contract just for the sake of benefiting the operator, you're not serving the public interest. And in the state of California, there's a law that requires state agencies to put all contracts out to government bid. And the reason why that exists is to protect the public interest, to avoid favoritism, to avoid political favors, to do the things that protect the public and, and give an interest in the public. So I realize it might be convenient or easy to say, well, Royal Coaches hasn't done a bad job. They're okay. We're okay. But that's not really the purpose of an RFP, is to just say we're going to rubber stamp an existing operator. If you put it out for an RFP, and I realize you're going to have to extend the existing operator for some period of time, because the existing contract, I think, expires May 18th. So I think there's been some assumption, if, if appropriate, that their contract is going to be extended without an RFP, but there should be an RFP. And the benefit to the public is that you have two operators that should be performing this service, and having two operators is obviously better than one, and there's no public reason not to give my client an opportunity to bid on an RFP. If it prevails, or if you decide at that point you need two operators, or would, the city would benefit from two operators, so be it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. that. Hello, I'm Dr. Jay Potter. I happen to be the compliance officer for Raddy, Cor Raddy Corporation, which is one of the entities that is applying for the cannabis permits that are now, you know, being processed uh, through your your city here. Uh, I'd like to just quickly introduce uh, a little bit of our team that we have. 
uh, sure. put together here. We have a, uh, a pretty impressive uh, technical team with the idea this is not just a, to be a growing operation, but actually uh, a production of high quality products for the medical industry. That's our focus. Uh, my background, I, I was very glad to see you recognize the vets. I'm a veteran. Uh, I started my career in the U.S. Navy as a nuclear engineer. Later became an engineering lab technician. So I got very uh, involved in the procedures of how to make sure something is uh, clean, pure, and exactly what we want. Uh, later on, I went on to uh, work for Varian Ultrasound as a... Uh, uh, <laughs> wow. Went totally blank here. Uh, as, you know, com doing their uh, compliance, uh, making sure everything is, you know, all the in pat particular equipment is up to spec, you know, quality control, you know, specifically. So I, I've had a very long and interesting career in many areas in engineering, uh, from nuclear to solar to uh, computer programming, I taught at the university level in research, so I have a very, very broad background that I'm bringing in uh, to Rade. I'm also the uh, general technical consultant for Nichan Technology, who is also being involved in your community. And both of these organizations are uh, very focused on uh, benefiting the veterans, uh, we're working with the Veterans Administration right now in uh, uh, providing them uh, CBD oil and also on the other side for the Veterans Association for uh, providing homes for the homeless vets, you know, from the two different organizations. So uh, we're here to benefit the city, and we hope that you uh, take uh, great consideration for our entity as, as far as the permits for the uh, cannabis operation here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. council people, uh, Oma Park <laughs> residents. Uh, one of the council persons uh, on um, 12-19, Weed consultant gave this person four thousand four hundred dollars. This is the part that's really ridiculous, people. The city attorney gave the same person two thousand five hundred. I I tell myself, what the world's going on? That ain't bad. Let me continue. A tow company, which. I'll say its name because they charge people ridiculous prices. Royal Coach gave that person $4,400 on the 31st of December. The tow company also gave her, that person, $100. It seems like to us, if this person voted on or around this time for the marijuana situation. Also on the 1220, donated $2,000. So it seems like to some of us residents is you people are, how should I say, white collar thieves. City attorney, this is bad, bad. He donated to that person $1,900. I think we pay him too much. Assistant city attorney, the other gentleman, or whoever he may be, he gave that individual $2,000. Now, you think the city attorney, because he works for the whole city, or us residents, I don't know, maybe he works independently. Why are you giving somebody like that that you don't, you're backing that person. You work for the city of Ballon Park. You don't work as an individual. Maybe when you leave here you do, but you don't. Further down the road, 
another one, $1,000. So you know what? It seems to us that the white collar job works pretty good. Another situation, $1,500. And they're looking at me with some pretty evil looking eyes. And further down, another donation, so claimed, 4,400. Ladies and gentlemen, residents of Baldwin Park, these people don't work for us. The last one, 4,400 again. Thank you very again. much. Appreciate that. Oh, by the way, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, moving along with public communication. Good evening, uh, City of Baldwin Park and residents. Gabriel Ramirez, Reza Del Monte. Uh, as you all know, I was, um, you know, last night in uh, City of El Monte, they, uh, there was no second motion with uh, towing services with Royal Coaches. And I want to speak for the record and, as, and uh, from experience, um, I forgot to, uh, to submit on, on the complaint for the record. Um, with Royal Coaches, there was an issue that we had and with, with our, because we had AAA uh, service with them and one thing I do find it is very, uh, very disturbing. And I want to let you know for the record. I know it's in El Monte, but I want to let you know here for the record before you guys make a decision. Um, it's very, I was myself, my mom, and my, my father were victims of the owner really very to the point of very unprofessional where we're trying to ask for, you know, with a service because our service wasn't wasn't properly well and so we had to go to a, uh, to the honda dealer and they told us to go with uh with the company to make sure to work with them so we went and very highly rude from the owner screaming at my own mother unprofessional on a very rude, rude of tone of voice and i opposed that to the city council of El monte and uh, uh, thankfully they they did not motion it, and I really highly recommend that you guys really look into it. It's not, it's not fabricated lies. It's not uh, what they think they're going to be saying. It's, I'm clean for the record, and I apologize for not putting on, you know, uh, make a complaint because of fear of retaliation. So I would really, really hope for the city of Baldwin Park to really, really look at the options of not just royal coaches, but other towing services and do and really uh, benefit for the residents as well to make sure that, that they're, they're not being cheated, that they feel that it's going to be transparency and have other options open of competitive with the towing services. And so I want to bring it up here. So before, uh, if I get shade thrown out, this is a fact, not uh, fabricated lies or, or any political movements or or paid, I'm not paid, I'm just speaking for the record and speaking as a real life experience that I had with them. And um, I suggest to do the right thing and hopefully Baldwin Park residents are hearing this and uh, I'll make it loud and clear this message. Thank you. Thank you very much. Move along with public communication. Good evening. Thank Good you. evening, Mayor, yeah. Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members, Staff, and Residents of Baldwin Park. I'm Christina Larios, Library Manager at the Baldwin Park Library. And I just wanted to let everybody know about two programs that are coming up. This Saturday, May 5th at 3 p.m., we will have a special magic show with Christopher T. Um, magician. He will incorporate reading and magic together in one show this Saturday at 3 p.m. And also, coming up on Tuesday, May 15th, we will be celebrating Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, and we will have the Polynesian Paradise Dancers at the library at 6.30 p.m. This is a family show for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay, move along with public communication. Hello. I'm Rogelio Magana. I'm back again. Today I have uh, a very particular uh, agenda. First and foremost, I want to congratulate you for your decision of allowing 10 more licenses. Whether I am one or not, it'll benefit your community. Today I'll focus my uh, attention on the veterans. Uh, for the last month, my organization has been dealing with the veteran affairs. As you know, the uh, House Appropriation uh, committee has passed a law allowing the vets to 
to actually use CBD without any repercussions, and that's a win-win-win. I congratulate the Senate for that as well. We are working with the Veterans Administrations for the homeless situation, and my Nichen uh, Technologies company will address that. The vets that are here, I welcome you to uh, come and give me your names and all. I need all of the information I can. Working with the vets has been very delightful, but wow, there's so much red tape. Uh, by the way, I hope that Baldwin Park is one more of our uh, facilities that will be able to provide uh, this incredible, incredible uh, uh, herb to, to the veterans who are suffering from, from very serious PTSD like my son. I am an advocate of, of, of helping the vets in any way I can, and I'm very fortunate to have an incredible, an incredible team, incredible organizations, willing to work with every single one of you. I'm uh, very much looking forward. Thank you all for your time, and uh, gentlemen, uh, we are here to help you, and uh, we will help if you, if you want it. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, moving along. No public communication. John Rios, resident. I don't need a translator this time. Uh, one of the things on your item number 11, you know, that's one of the things that I've been reading on. We have a population of 75, 80,000 people because just the fees for the city is 334,070, mm -hmm. and then uh, for the vendors, 318,513 in total. But all the other cities, El Monte, Beverly Hills, Glendale, Glendora, Huntington Park, Irwindale, you know, Montebello, San Fernando, West Covina, none of them come close to what we are charging the residents of Baldwin Park. You know, and that the populations doesn't jive, you know. It's something that, you know, the city council, I don't care what you do on the side or whatever you do, but don't punish the residents of Baum Park, okay? That's one thing that uh, you have to look. Remember in November, it's election time, mm -hmm. okay? So right now, do the right thing, we'll see. If you don't, well, we'll see too. Since the last time that I talked to you, Mr. Lozano, about your attitude and everything, the same day you threw somebody up under the bus. You know, the state should control the ones that are going to be moving all that weed all over. You know, it's a monopoly. I talked to some lawyers that are friends of mine. They said, it's a monopoly. What are they talking about? What kind of lawyers do you guys have? You know, read the law first before you say it isn't. Go ahead and smile, Robert. Okay. Huh? You know, are you through Mrs. Rubio under the bus? She wanted the state to get involved in something like that. To give one individual. It's like, I have my farm. I'm going to have somebody else come in and take my stuff. Come on, be serious. Think about it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Moi along with public communication. Anyone wish to speak? Mayor, council members, residents. My name is Richard Santos. I'm the commander of Post 508. Okay, and the uh, purpose of my visit here tonight is to develop a partnership. Uh, we've been working with April Rojo and using your facilities at the McNeil Center, Senior Center. Yes. And I was wanting to introduce the members of past commanders, uh, Ray Rojas, John Figueroa, Steve Lopez, and Domingo Samolin. We're here to provide services to the community as well as veterans helping veterans, okay? So if we could meet with the council member 
to further discuss our our programs, our agendas. We have a boy state where we have high school students from Baldwin Park that we're sending to Sacramento this this summer to to learn government. So if uh, we could possibly meet with one of the council members, uh, it'd be nice that we could uh, bring our programs to the, to the city. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Looking forward, and we'll definitely schedule a meeting to meet with you. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, Council Member Monica Garcia. I just want to mention, if you want to connect with, our, with Manny Garillo, our Director of Recreation and Community Services, and Manny, sure. you have my permission to give him my cell phone so you can yes. contact me directly. Yes, and mine is, like, please. Uh, Greg Tuttle, business owner. Um, on your number 11, it says exemplary uh, performance, okay? When you have a company that is, has se severe code violations from building on from their office on uh, a body shop that was illegally done, we've had to code enforce that street numerous times to finally get the fire department to red curb it, and th this is not exemplary. And also they need to fix the code violations because you have other businesses fixing their violations but not Royal Coaches. Now on to this thing here. If you proceed with this, we will sue the city. This is not right to not go out to an RFP. I don't care what your city attorney drums up or anything else with the municipal code. He's been numerous times wrong with the weed deal. So this is another time for this. Also, you have documents in front of you. This is a civil grand jury that I told you the last time that I met with these people. And they give you examples on how to do contracts the right way and how they want these contracts done. This was done by the grand jury in L.A. It shows council members like Monica Garcia shouldn't be taking $4,400 from Royal Coaches. They don't want you to receive cars or donations. They want this a neutral deal. But that's not how this thing works in Baldwin Park. I supplied you with Willie's sheet. It's called a rap sheet. Mayor, you know with two brothers always being arrested what a rap sheet's about. And Bill has a problem with drugs. Bill has a problem with uh, driving under the influence. And Bill has a problem with uh, assault with a deadly weapon. Oh, yes, they were, they were expunged. But it's still the same person. Okay? Still the same person. People don't change, just for the moment. Also, this staff has failed to prove that this contract benefits the city by having one Royal Coaches or not having two companies do the same thing or a different company do it and we make more money, honestly, instead of giving campaign donations out. Out of the 12 cities, our city is the highest in charges. They show $900 for a one-day storage. Yes, a lot of that, half of that is because of the city's fees and half of it's Royal Coaches. Then the people go to pick up their car from Impound and they're always missing stuff out of their cars like cell phones, baby seats, car jacks, and everything else. Royal Coaches has illegally built the body shop behind. They're illegally operating on this, behind the smog shop on auto body using the smog shop's license. I just noticed that the other day. This thing has to be done, which I will turn into your code enforcement people. This is not exemplary company. This is called shady business and done because they get council approval for it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Margarita Vargas, uh, good evening. Um, you know that you don't like to follow the Robert rules of order, but at least I think you need to follow the agenda. Um, I told you, I think this is, this is my second time that I'm telling you. If you report the closed station before you open the meeting, how is it going to be in the minutes? So according to the agenda, the report from closed stations should be after roll call. So I, I hope that somebody reminds you to follow the agenda. I don't know who's supposed to do that, the city clerk or the lawyer. You know, I don't know. Um, the other thing is um, on Monday, you know, with the construction of the streets, I don't know how many 
streets are doing, but on Monday was a mess for all the people that take the kids to school. Bowling Park High School, Gettys, uh, Santa Fe, Holland, Margaret Heat, they all were really upset, all the parents, because they took, my daughter took an hour to get to, from BP to, um, to uh, Heat, because all the streets were closed. And they were not even working because it was sprinkling. So, you know, I don't know who does the planning or who does that, but they have to be more conscious of the um, hours of the, the parents going to schools, you know, in the morning and then the um, afternoon when they get out because it's really a mess. Then now in a good, <laughs> something good, I'd like to invite you uh, from the water. I thought the... the manager was going to be here, um, to the um, Water Awareness Celebration. It's going to be Thursday, May 17, from 10 to 1. And we're going to have um, a lot of information, refreshment. We're going to have hamburgers. And um, um, plants there, you know, they don't need a lot of water. We're going to give them away. So we hope that you go there. It's going to be in the Nixon Clinton Nixon facility, the the one where the tanks are in Baldwin Park Boulevard, and the address is uh, 14233 John Bridge Street in Baldwin Park. So I hope you can make it. We always invite you, but I know it's in the daytime, but maybe somebody can make a time to be there. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. At this point, anyone else wishing to speak? Oh, we have one of our veterans. Come on up. Thank you. I apologize. Uh, our commander neglected. Uh, just want to let you know we're having an event this Sunday at uh, McNeil, Julia, and it's a salsa dance. It's a Mother's Day salsa dance. We're going to have food. It's a fundraiser. And this is how we get our funds for our particular programs, whether it be scholarships or the school for all the kids and the veterans, of course. And just to mention also, we're involved with uh, vet hunters and if there's any information that you guys need we'll be able to do that for you again thank you very much thank you thank you very much all right anyone else wishing to speak on a public hearing public communication first off i'd like to say good evening good evening Steam council uh mayor lozano um, i'm here as a community activist i just wanted to speak uh, truth to power uh I'm here this evening to address Councilwoman Rubio, track record of being dishonest to her constituents. Time and time again, she talks about the importance of transparent government agencies and proper oversight of taxpayer money. Uh, if you go back and listen to the recordings of several council meetings, you will hear her say time and time again that she is a keeper and protector of communities' taxpayer money. She represents herself as an ardent steward of taxpayer money. However, the only thing she commits to doing is spending her community's money. Because the irony in all this is that she herself doesn't pay her taxes. Councilwoman Rubio has failed to pay property taxes in the years of 2004, 2005, 2006, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, let me catch my breath, and 2013 on her home. For over a half dozen years, the county of Los Angeles was chasing her to pay her taxes plus fines and second fines, which finally resulted in a foreclosure of her home. She was provided notices of default on at least two occasions over a span of nine years for not paying taxes and not paying her mortgage. Ms. Rubio has abused the system to her advantage and gave authorization to short sell her home which resulted in nearly the forgiveness of 200000 of her mortgage. Um, in addition to that, under federal and banking law, she should have been forced to vacate her home somehow through more lies and dishonesty. Our councilwoman used her influence to remain in her home. Wouldn't we all like to have such a privilege? I'm sure there are many of her constituents who aren't as fortunate. Um, surprisingly, with collusion between her own roommate, Norma Silva, and her roommate's brother, 
the new owner, investor, was able to buy the house in a short sale of 170000 under market value. Yeah. I'm almost done. Approximately, the evidence shows that the new buyer directly paid the property taxes to the county of Los Angeles. Ms. Rubio never paid property taxes on her home, yet she continues to sit here on the dais every month and decide how to spend our taxpayer money. The broker has to provide a broker's price opinion, and Ms. Rubio had a financial relationship with her broker because she was living there and paying her rent with Ms. Rubio. Lastly, it was noted that the buyer's real estate agent was Norma Silva's brother. There appears to be a lot of collusion between Councilwoman Rubio and her roommate. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right. Moving along with public communication, anyone else wishing to speak? Mayor. Yes. Excuse me. What, 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 what was your name? Yes. For the record. Community organizer? For the record. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. So moving along. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Dr. Richard Senna. I'm... My doctorate degree is in humanities. Mm -hmm. For th I retired in 1983, and I've spent 35 years providing for widows and orphans, especially single mothers, especially who lose their homes or their living facilities. I bought a 35-room house in Altadena. <clears throat> And I took care of 15 teenage boys that were living out on the street. And there's thousands of them in this city. I'm talking about Los Angeles County area. What I've learned over the years in trying to provide for these people is that we are under attack our, our health. And I know there's a lot of controversy about medical marijuana, but I also know that the United Nations, through their protocols 1 through 20, require that all drinking or food must have toxins in them that are all f based from a molecule an oil derivative called benzene, which is the leading cause of disease in this country. Now, when you're considering who to bring in to provide medical marijuana, you should realize that it's very critical that it be done properly. And the federal and state also requires this. There are products being developed right now to chelate benzene out of the body, and there's no other way that's been developed because it's an oil derivative. It's not water-soluble, so the body cannot eliminate benzene. But there's new products that are in coordination with medical marijuana that can chelate all the benzene out of our bodies and bring health back to this country. So please consider that when you're, I joined this organization and I've used my 35 years of research to help them provide health for this nation. Thank you. All right, good evening. Hello, Mayor and Hello. Council Members. Uh, uh, my name is Carlos Barrera. I come to speak on behalf of the RAD group, and uh, I would like to introduce the idea of how this, this industry of the medical marijuana aspect is lacking the, the essence of uh, the medical approach, compassionate care. All this has turned into a big business model, and this group provides uh, the, the gentleman that came before for this group, Dr. Richard Senna, Dr. Chang, Wenyi Chang Technologies, they develop housing that develop houses in a matter of hours with uh, innovative technology. 
You got Dr. J. Potter, same thing with uh, Nichen. You have Dr. Nee with Nichen, and you have uh, the CVD uh, approach we're taking to work with the Veterans Affairs where they're trying to treat the veterans with uh, CVD because, you know, the, the medicinal properties and the opioid crisis and the lack of, of a compassionate care. So with this group right here, I understand they were denied on the first go around for the licensing and I really want you to understand that this group does provide that, a medical approach, compassionate care. And everybody's trying to make profit and we're just taking a, a honest approach for this. They, they want to help the community and develop products with CBD and THC to help the community. I know an individual that suffers from this, this situation where he started taking opioids and real brilliant kid. He was working at, at the group for JPL, the internship, and he started taking opioids and it really messed him up. He got into some trouble. He came, I guess, mental incompetent or chemical imbalance. And this, this is a real crisis in America, as we all know. So for the city of Baldwin Park issuing the licensing, we want you to understand you have to consider groups like this because the doctors are here to help and these groups provide that, and the criteria right here is more than excellent. So we want you to understand that what our group brings. Uh, I've worked with other companies that are doing this only for the profit, and this group, of course, wants to make money, but we want to help the community, not only here in Baldwin Park, but throughout Southern California. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right. Move along with public communication. I'll see no interest, and I'll declare the public communication. Oh, come on up. That's fine. That's fine. Good evening. Good evening, Council. Um, my name is Veronica Tomas. I'm a resident from El Monte, and I came here to speak about the item uh, for Royal Coaches Towing. I understand that Baldwin Park wants to extend the contract up to 10 years with this tow company instead of opening up the bids, uh, which would seem to be illegal and unfair. Um, yesterday in El Monte, uh, we, our council had a vote. A councilman had put Royal Coaches back on the agenda for services, and uh, there was no second motion. So, uh, you know, I hope this sends a message or starts a trend. Um, I hope this will send a message or start a trend that other cities will follow. It's no secret that Royal Coaches uh, funds politicians. We, the community, don't profit from this. Uh, the community ends up suffering. Baldwin Park has been in the spotlight since the infamous 2012 checkpoint with regards to tows uh, and tow companies. Uh, what's important to note is that there was a civil grand jury investigation 2016-2017 uh, when I received their report last year. It is available online. Um, it's many pages long and it's, regard, it's in regard to police contracted tow companies. Um, Baldwin Park is in there, El Monte is in there, Azusa, West Covina, um, cities who use Royal Coaches as their contracted tow company and it's, it's not favorable. It's not favorable. Um, one of the recommendations by the civil grand jury is to, for politicians to post on a public website any gifts they have received from vendors, especially tow company, you know, especially with the tow company, uh, for the public to view that because, you know, it's important for us to know, you know, if if uh, politicians are receiving gifts from vendors for their votes um, and I would really ask that you please open up the bidding uh, which would seem the fair thing to do at this point because I, I don't remember when there was bidding up for Royal Coaches in Baldwin Park their contract just keeps extending and extending so um, thank you very much uh, thank you very much appreciate that all right moving along with public communication anyone else Good afternoon. My name is Emmanuel Estrada. I'm a resident of Baldwin Park, and uh, I just wanted to talk about re real quick about a rent control. We just saw somebody that's uh, currently dealing with that issue, and uh, actually, there's nothing anybody can do about uh, 
rent increases right now because there's no rent control in the city. Uh, municipalities are in charge of uh, putting in rent control, and I just wanted to kind of urge all of you to put in rent control before uh, this becomes a, a bigger issue. All around uh, Los Angeles County, uh, people are being evicted and, and uh, kicked out of their homes uh, because there's no... Um, there's nothing regulating these, and, and uh, kids and families and children, mothers, single mothers, working, working class uh, residents uh, are, are being kicked to the curb to make uh, room for, for larger uh, profit margins. And so uh, I know you guys have been talking about taking care of the elderly, the homeless. I've seen you guys at the, at the meetings. And, um, and there's, a, there's a very uh, strong correlation between mental health, physical health, and uh, the true. mental stress that rent control, put, uh, that high rents put on people. <clears throat> there's, um, there's a connection between the... The, the education that children have and, and having to move them from school to school because they can no longer afford rent. There's a lot of correlation, and, uh, and if you put in rent control and we start talking about affordable housing, we could actually take care of uh, the elderly, veterans, the uh, immigrant families, the working class, and our children. So I would really urge you to, uh, to really move on this issue and, and, you know, and, and take approach and uh, just really set an example for the rest of the San Gabriel Valley before we too become like Los Angeles, uh, the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel. All right, anyone else wishing to speak under public communication? Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Mayor, city council members, officer, chief. Uh, I haven't been here for, for a while. Uh, been busy. Uh, what I hear, I come back and pretty much the same. Uh, the only advice I can give, and this is not even my advice, uh, I think what we all need is discernment for decisions. Because somewhere along the line, we're making wrong decisions. And I hear the brothers and sisters out in the audience, and I hear that they're speaking things about the members. And I mean, I don't know. Uh, it says in the Word of God, take the speck out of your own eye before you. I think you know the scripture. Uh, also, sweep around your own front porch before you're push, putting fingers, pointing fingers at others. And in Proverbs it reads, he who hates disguises it with his lips and lays up deceit with himself. When he speaks kindly, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. So whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and he who rolls a stone will have it rolled back on him. Brothers and sisters, we're not promised tomorrow. We can't serve two masters. I know that money is, we need that in, in today's world and society. But put the Father first. And if any of this stuff is true to anyone out here or in front of me, clean it up. We're not promised tomorrow. God's day, one day at a time, because, like I said, we're not promised tomorrow, so just a little piece of advice. And to this brother back here that said that we don't change, brother, we change. I, was, I wasn't Mr. I'm not Mr. Righteous, but God will change your life, guaranteed. All you have to do is get on your knees, put your hands up, and surrender, just like we do. If you're doing something wrong, you know you're doing something wrong, these officers are going to roll up on you, get down on your knees, put your hands up. Only the wicked flee when no one pursues. I just say, you guys are young, you have life. Do it right, guys, because people are watching. Be the examples. Again, that's all I'm saying. God bless. Have a good night. Thank you very much. I'm moving along with public communication. Anyone else wishing to speak? Okay, if not, I will not declare the public communication closed. Mayor, may I have to say something? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I feel I need to speak up on behalf of all victims of domestic violence. I am a victim of domestic violence. Last council meeting, meeting my abuser was mentioned in this dais. It wasn't me, but I was told that he was going to send someone to attack me. And so to that I will say, unfortunately, the restraining order doesn't stop anybody else from attacking me since he can't come to this podium. And so once again, I ask all victims who are currently going through the same thing to stay strong. Speak up and don't stay quiet. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you, uh, Council Member Susan Rubio. All right, at this point, we're going to go ahead and go into the, um, we're going into the consent calendar. Council Members wishing to pull any item? Yes. Yes. Um, number six and seven. 
All right, so Council Member Cruz Baca is requesting number six and seven. Okay, one moment. Be right with you. And okay. five. Six, seven. And five. Five. That one, okay. All right. So, Councilman is wishing to pull any other items. If not, I'll go ahead and motion to move consent calendar's items with the exception of both items number five, five, six, and seven. That's my motion. Second. Any objections? See none. So moved. All right. The first one that we have requested by Councilman Cruz Baca is the uh, the um, the second reading of ordinance, uh, which has to deal with the cannabis. So, at this point, uh, Councilmember Cruz Baca. Um, I would like to bring this item back. Um, the item that concerns me is number 1412, uh, only because, as I mentioned at the council meeting a couple of weeks ago, um, there is litigation pending, and I need some f clarification as to what really is uh, mandated from, by the state. And also, I would like some clarification. Um, I would like to make a motion that we move forward with all items except for ordinance number 1412. Are they, I'll they, second they, it. The second, any objections? Mayor, I'll make a substitute okay, motion okay, to move the items forward. All right. Okay, so at this point, there's item. I, I just want to say on, okay, so the substitute motion uh, will go ahead. I just want have a question on, on, on the order on 1412. And I would like to, I know that there's 49 years, I would like to refer to 20 year uh, contract. So, Mayor, I'd like yes. to make a motion then to move these items, all these items forward with the um, with the change that you've, you're proposing. Right. Then I'll go Mayor, ahead. Mayor, I would yes. like to okay, chime second in. that motion. Second? Okay. Well, point, I, yes. I want to just point out for the record that this is the item that was first given a monopoly. Uh, then it was reduced to 49 years. We have 15 total permits, and none of them have this type of, of exception. Um, I would like to add that I would like for that particular contract to be equitable. That means that all 15 look the same and are given the same treatment. Uh, instead of having 49-year contract to do a five-year review like everyone else, I also would like to recommend that uh, we remove language that is very different from all other contracts. I spent some time reviewing these contracts, and that is the only one, once again, that is allowed to transfer the permit to someone else without council approval. That puts our city in danger because just like a liquor license, once again, we cannot transfer a liquor license. It goes back to you know, the uh, decision makers for review again so we can vet the new person getting this permit. Um, also, I would like to point out that we're currently being sued because of this permit, and I would like to add that if you're gonna approve this permit, then they need to reimburse the taxpayers for all the legal fees that currently were being that are that being incurred is. by the city council and the city, and that is taxpayer money. So if we can agree that they need to pay for those legal fees, we can reduce it to a five-year review process like all the other contracts, and that it's not transferable because it puts our community in danger, then I would agree with that motion. All right. So at this point, there, there's a, there was a motion by Councilmember Monica Garcia, by Vice Mayor Ricardo Pacheco, and are, is there an objection? Any objections? Yes, if it's, uh, we don't include some of the items that we discussed right. because, again, this is our taxpayer money and it puts oh. our community in danger. All right, so at this point, I will ask our city clerk, uh, Maria Contreras, that we could conduct the. Oh, Alejandra Avila, sorry about that. Thank you very much. Uh, Mayor. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Are we, are we voting for the amendment that Councilmember Rubio said to go ahead and include the language that all the other. The, all the other ordinances or all the other licenses and also for the, the legal fees to be reimbursed back to the city and uh, also to, what was the third one, the third language? The language for transfer. Oh, the language for the transfer of, uh, uh, of the property. Basically, it would be the same as all the other uh, 14 uh, licenses. Um, and to shorten, which would include the five years and no transfer of business and... Remove the monopoly. And no transfer of, of uh, business. 
Of the uh, license, of the license, that was of the license. That's fine. Um, so uh, I'm confused. What are we voting okay. for? Well, the first vote is that um, Councilman Monica Garcia made a substitute motion that was also seconded by Councilmember Ricardo Pacheco. So let's vote on that one, and that is to pass the the current ordinance, uh, uh, the hearing with the changes on ordinance 1412 uh, so it will go from 49 years to 20 years and that's what stands so that's the first vote and then we'll go to the second one that's so the you, only change that's, that's the, the only, only change. change so we are ignoring the fact that we're paying legal fees for this uh company who's a third party this is he, they're not even part of our city number one and we are allowing them to transfer this license which is very sensitive to our community we are allowing them to literally take the cannabis in and out without coming to city council for approval if they decide to forego that license. So I want the community to understand that that is a dangerous situation to be in when we don't know who has control of that permit for the next 20 years, as council member Monica Garcia is suggesting. I still believe that they should be reviewed every five years, just like all the other contracts. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, oh, thank you. Yes, Councilmember. Let's go ahead and take the vote, and then we'll yes. have conversation. All right. So at this point, the, uh, the at this point, we're going to go ahead and go back to the actual vote, which is uh, the substitute uh, motion by Councilmember Monica Garcia that we pass all the ordinance with the change on item fourteen twelve. Uh, legal counsel, yes, go ahead. So uh, fourteen twelve, which is, is going to go from forty nine years to twenty, which is the one I had proposed, and it was seconded by Councilmember Ricardo Pacheco. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So at this point, go ahead. Go yes. Ahead. It's good. Yes. Yes. I don't want a monopoly in our city. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. No, the legal fees concern me because it is taxpayer money, and I would like to see that the city get reimbursed for that because it is not the taxpayer's fault that we're in the middle of litigation with this. All right. Um, uh, yes. Okay. So the motion passes uh, three, two. May yes. I make one yes. point yes. of information, the, Mayor? I do want to make it very clear that the ordinance itself states that none of these permits are transferable so that um, even if a um, development agreement were to say that, um, the ordinance will trump any development agreement. Mayor, may I make a comment yes. to that? Councilmember, yes. So, legal counsel, if you can um, entertain my question. So, is every, does every contract have the same language, the exact same language? Or are they all the same no. in terms of transferability? No. They're, so they're not the same. So this one in particular, when I reviewed it, it had language that no other one had, and I believe it was, that, it, that they were able to transfer it to the successor in interest. So what that means, that it is transferable. Am I wrong? Well, um, the ordinance says that it's not transferable, so it uh, doesn't matter what the development agreement says. Um, but no, you're not wrong. So then he just said it doesn't matter that uh, because the ordinance trumps this, so let's remove that language. If the language indeed does not matter and it's not transferable, then why do we need that different language in that contract? Why not remove it? So. I would suggest that we remove that language since it doesn't matter. So I challenge my colleagues, if it's not transferable, at any given time, let's remove that language from that contract. Legal um, that, that certainly would be an option available to the council. So I, I don't know if I could substitute it and say that, uh, again, if it's not transferable, let's remove that language. It doesn't matter according to what I just heard. Then. Let's remove that language and make it equitable, and let's have all the licenses or permits rather say the same exact thing. Without that language, it doesn't matter. Let's remove that sentence from that contract. Mayor, I, I was saying just we already voted on this, and it's okay. Cool. We'll move on. All right. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and move on uh, to the next um, item that we have here. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go over to the uh, public hearing. Uh, that we have, which is the uh, nine. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, yes. if you don't mind, I'm seven. sorry, but. Oh, that's right, that's right. So let me go to six. 
Sorry about that. Six uh, requests by Councilman Cruz Baca, the second reading approval of ordinance number 1406, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Baldwin Park, California, amending Chapter 50 of the Baldwin Park Municipal Code and enacting a new section in Chapter 50 related to mandatory commercial and multifamily recycling. All righty. Um, and um, I understand because there was an explanation, but I remember that I did request two weeks ago um, to get some type of a cost as to what this is going to cost the multifamily and also the commercial. And I didn't see any of that in the, re the staff report unless I missed something. Who is that you, Sam? Yeah, the, the, uh, the staff report does, does not include the cost. Yes, and I had asked for that two weeks ago, so that I, you know, so that our businesses and our multifamily, I understand, uh, because you did explain it. It was, and I did understand the explanation. However, I wanted to see what the cost would be. Do you know what the cost will be? Uh, because I'm sure that there's going to be a cost that the businesses and the multifamilies are, uh, buildings are going to have to absorb. Yes, I, I'd like to ask uh, Terry to come up and. Um and help us out. These uh, these rates were approved by City Council um, two years ago. Yes. And uh, for the uh, organics uh, recycling, which was part of that uh, approval, uh, it was included in there for the units. I, I don't recall uh, what that amount is, but I can definitely get that to you. Okay. Um, um, so first of all, I wanted to just clarify that with the organics law. Uh, There's six. three different ways that a business can satisfy mm -hmm. the law. One is to donate organics to a nonprofit, a food bank, a food security program. The other one is for them to self haul it themselves. And many grocery stores, um, like Costco's, large types of you know companies that have large amounts of food. They already are doing that, where they're themselves backhauling it to a, a distribution, a warehouse, someplace, and then they're then they're going ahead and doing the um, that type of recycling. So there's that's an option. The other one is if they want to subscribe to services with us. The the uh, rates were passed two years ago, as you said, for a cart, an organics cart that they can have. One day a week service is seventy nine dollars and thirty four cents a month. And that's pretty much what we're offering at this point because what's left in a lot of cases with these are these smaller businesses that maybe aren't going to have large amounts to backhaul to a distribution center. Um, and whenever we talk to customers, we always make sure they understand that there's those three different options. And in doing so, trying to help them to figure out what works best for them. There is a flyer that's going to be in their, um, their bill coming up that explains the law, explains their options, um, to contact the city if they have questions, because they, they do have to report if they're doing the other types, mm -hmm. if they're backhauling or if they're donating, they have to report that to the city who then reports it to the state, which contributes to the overall diversion rate for the city. So it's something that the state of California is requiring all businesses to do is the organics recycling and regular recycling. Okay, so could we put that in the now as well? Because I know that some of the businesses, um, Manny, I know that some of the businesses will be asking, uh, well, I, I know that it's it's strictly restaurants and so forth, anybody that has organic waste, in other words, and I understand all of that. So as long as that we can get some clarification so that, you know, they know that they have options other than paying the $79 or whatever you said uh, per month, bless you. Um, whatever, whatever it is, you know, so that that way they know their their options. Thanks. Sure. I could work with Maddie and, and Sam to put together something for the now. Definitely. Okay, and also maybe on our website. Yeah, so that Absolutely. we could. Yes. Yeah, there's information on our website and also on the city's website that explains the law and explains the different per options they can do already. Okay. So we'll Thank just you. remind them to go check it out if they want more information. All right, thanks. I make a motion that we pass item number Second. Six. Oh, I have to read the whole thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, la, la, la. All right, go ahead. Um, the second reading and approval of ordinance number 1406, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Ball Park, California, amending Chapter 50 of the Ball Park Municipal Code and enacting a new section in Chapter 50 related to mandatory commercial and multifamily recycling. Thank you. 
All right, thank you. Okay, that's my, seconded by Vice Mayor Ricardo Pacheco. Any objections? See none to move. Item 7, requested by Councilman Cruz Baca, the exclusive negotiation agreement in a between the City of Ball Park and MG Development Group for purchase of city-owned former Caltrans lots on Garvey Avenue. Yes, Councilmember Cruz Baca. Um, I would like for this item to be brought back to June. Um, I had asked um, the gentleman that gave us the presentation, Michael, I believe is his first name, um, to please uh, give us some type of when we had a lot of different uh, of how we would like some of the architectural design to look or changes okay. in that. Um, so if we sure. could please bring this back to June. Mayor, I'm sorry. Uh, so that we could please bring, bring it back to June so that he can, I know that, that this is um, uh, the part of the ENA and I, and I understand is so that he can do some of that. But I would really, before we proceed, I would really like to see what the changes are that he has made to the existing designs that he showed us. All right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, Scott, Mayor, Scott. I, would, I would request that we move forward. That it would be premature to ask him to do those architectural drawings right now. We're just... We need to just at least get an estimate how much that property is worth, and then we can move forward from that point. And if he decides to, to move forward, we can go forward. You know, that's a blighted part of the city, and it's really hard to get developers uh, to look at those particular parcels. And we're not committing to anything. It's all at the expense of the developer, and we get an idea of what the price would be for that property, and then ask him for a number of, of uh, developments, I mean, of uh, architectural drawings and so forth. So I would move that. Uh, we continue with the staff's recommendation. I had a motion on the table. The, and my I'll second it. Okay, I would, I would object Excuse to her motion. Excuse me. My other concern is that there was a donation that was made to uh, Monica Senate campaign uh, before this vote today. Okay, I would like to add that I want to read your 460s from you and Susan and start talking about your all the contributions that you receive from every developer if you're going to make that the issue. So uh, I deny, uh, I, I said, I deny your request. You do take a lot of money from a lot of developers, and I'm going to bring that up. That becomes an issue. Susan Rubio and her sister are running for campaigns, and they America, take a lot of money. No, I'm not going to do that, no, Susan. No, do not interrupt me, Susan. Hold I'm speaking. When I'm done, do it, it does because she brought it up. I brought sister, it up because and, I think Excuse so me, but I'm going to stop you there. You help. I'm going to finish. Both of you take a lot of contributions. Susan Ruby and her sister takes contributions from the city attorney, from a lot of contractors that are up here. And you guys want to make that the issue? So where's, you know, you got a bias. You, you have a lot of, you took your money from road coaches, and yet you, you take money from other contractors here, then you shake them down and bring them up here and, and ask for the invoices. I think that's wrong. So, Mayor, I don't know where we're at with this, but I'll object to her. Uh, Mayor, whatever yes, she before wants we to go do. ahead, because right, I'm, fine, I know ahead. that I'm going to lose on this one, I just want to clarify that, again, uh, Council, my, Vice Mayor Pacheco is, is, um, yes. is making up a lot of these stories. I am free to show my 460, and I, don't, I, I'm, I have nothing to hide like you do, Vice Mayor Pacheco. Really? So, yes. So yeah, I'm not going on, to. Hold on. I'm Louder not, to speak, please. I'm not going to take up any more time. I said thank what you. I needed to okay. say, and that's fine. All right. Thank you. Okay. So at this point, there is a, a, a motion by Councilman Cruz Baca, and it was seconded by Councilman uh, Susan Rubio, and <sighs> there was one objection by Vice Mayor Ricardo Pacheco. So at this point, I will ask Ms. Avila to take roll call. All right. Council Member Baca? No. And that is to move this to another day. Oh, That's yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Move yes. yes. Councilmember Rubio? Yes. Mayor Protep Pacheco? No. Councilmember Garcia? No. Mayor Lozano? No. Okay, the motion fails. Three, two. Mayor, so, I would like to uh, motion to move this forward. I think it's a great opportunity for us to develop this site. It's, a, it's unsightly. It's, uh, it serves nobody at this point in time. And I think we can get a nice development. And I want to thank uh, Mayor Pro Tem Ricardo Pacheco for making the statements that you did because you're absolutely right. So my motion is to approve this. All right. Is, is there a second? Second. second. Any objections? Yes. Okay. Well, at this point, there's two objections. Uh, so I have our Madam City Clerk. I will uh, take roll call, please. Thank okay. you. Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member uh, Mayor Pro Tem Pacheco, sorry. The, yeah, the motion is to pass. To move pass. the item. Yes. <laughs> Council Member Baca? No. Council Member Rubio? No. Mayor Lozano? Yes, motion passes 3 2. All right, so at this point, we're going to go over to the public hearing, which is the update of the cost of the city service fees based on consumer price index CP and other adjustments. So, who is handling this? Uh, we're asking that that item be held over oh, one more time. That's right. Until, uh, that's right. Okay, I'll go ahead and make a motion to uh, place this on I'll the second. agenda, May, May, uh, the 16th. 
It was seconded by Councilmember Monica Garcia. Any objections? Seeing on so move. Item 10, public hearing regarding fiscal year 2018-2019 community development block grant, CDVG and home investment partnership fund annual action plan. So at this point we have the honorable and the distinguished Ms. Susie Reales. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I know it's late, so let's get this done. Um, tonight's hearing is a final of two required public hearings to receive comments or input regarding the proposed CDBG and home fiscal year 2018-19 annual action plan. <clears throat> we actually have great news this year. For the first time in several years, the allocations from, home, from HUD have not reduced but have actually increased. The CDBG increases a little bit less than 80000 and the home increases over 100000 the unfortunate part is the, the announcement of funding didn't happen until today. Therefore, the proposed annual plan under consideration tonight includes the old allocations. However, in anticipation of the announcement and to ensure the report is finalized and submitted by the HUD due date of May 15th, staff would include in tonight's staff report the recommendation to authorize the, C, the CEO and Director of community, community Development to revise project funding as needed based on the actual amounts once they were, were announced. As soon as those revisions have been made, we'll submit the plan to HUD and then staff will include in a future council communication report and also post on the city's website the list of the final um, individual allocations as revised. City Council is now requested to open the public hearing, accept public comments, and upon closing the hearing, um, approve the proposed plan, noting the pending revisions by the CEO and director. I'm available if you have any questions. All right. Thank you very much. At this point, I will open up the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak in, in, in favor? With this one, the CDBG, you could come up and do so at this time. Anyone opposing? See no further interest, I now declare the public hearing closed. So at this point, do we need a motion for this particular uh, public hearing or just closing it? Uh, um, a motion to approve. All right, so at this point, I'll go ahead and motion for the uh, public hearing regarding the fiscal year 2018-2019 Community Development Block Grant, CBG and Home Investment Partnership Home Fund Annual Action Plan. That is my motion. Second. Second. Any objections? See none. So moved. All right. So at this point, we'll go over to item 11, which is a consideration of towing franchise request for proposal RFP or extension. Uh, so at this point, uh, anyone have any questions? Uh, Mayor? Yes, Councilman Ricardo Pacheco. Uh, I, I would just like to add that uh, I know that there were several comments made and there's a lot of interest by different contractors for this particular contract. I know that uh, a lot of the statements that were made here about exclusionary contracts and contracts for 10 years and all that, a lot of the vendors that, are, that will eventually bid for this type of a, of a contract have the same contracts in other cities. They give contributions to every council member in their particular cities. They have a lot of cities that, uh, that they're in. And, you know, I just think, you know, it's, it, they're all the same. I mean, it's, it's equal as far as how they do things. I think that uh, Royal Co Coaches uh, is a very good company, very exemplary company. I think they've, uh, uh, they've done good service. They've worked very hard in, uh, in West Covina. They, they do a good job there and, and a lot of other cities that, um, you know, that they, that they work in. Uh, so I really enjoyed the fact that they've been serving the city of Ball Park uh, for so many years and uh, I think that uh, you know they try to help out in the community as much as they can but for the sake of transparency I would support doing uh, a six-week RFP uh, if everybody feels that there's a community out there feels that there's an issue let's take a look at um, at everybody and give them a fair opportunity to uh, to bid on the contract and I would say that the bidding would start immediately as a six-week uh, uh, opening bid and bring them back uh, to the next available council meeting, uh, I guess in June. I'll second that. And the uh, the other the other thing I would say is they would stay as the firm until after the bidding, and if they win the the bid, then they continue. If they don't, then there'll be a transition period for that. Yeah, let me let me just uh, real quick also mention because I know that individuals were up here who unfortunately spoke very derogatory of this particular uh, uh, towing company that has been in Baldwin Park since the 1970s and they have an, a stellar record. It was mentioned about the court itself, but just to let everyone know, no charges, that was dropped. Uh, and, and, the and the thing that you need to know about this particular towing company is that they have literally pitched in hundreds if not thousands of dollars throughout the community wide, including the veterans that are here in Baldwin Park as well. So it's unfortunate that, of course, 
certain people are marketing for a specific towing company and they've now become the target and that's just that's the way it is. And that's part of the, dem the democratic process that we have to accept it in that particular way. But I just have to make sure that I, that I for the record, um, um, say this family is a very extremely family oriented in our community and has been for, for many, many years. As a matter of fact, the, the good service that they provide for the city of West Covina, they're the only towing company in West Covina, they expand them for 10 years. So that in itself says a lot uh, of the type of work and commitment that the workers provide every day uh, throughout, through, throughout, throughout the region as well. I just want to state that for the record. All right. So at this point, uh, Councilmember Ricardo Pacheco has. The, we make. Did you make a motion to move this? Right. Motion, motion second. No objections. So it will RFP. be on uh, the RFP. Has been requested. No objections. All right. So, and Mr. Mayor, if yes. I may, because there was some information provided oh. earlier. Uh, by the speaker that I think is incorrect. Uh, according to the staff report, this contract is going to expire on August 20th, 2018, not May, whatever he said. Okay, all right. Okay, so at this point. Okay, I just want to make sure that it is a staff understanding that they will continue uh, to be the city's tow operator until after the bidding, and if they win, they continue. If not, is there any other information you need about the tow contract so that there's a smooth transition from RFP to? To the award. Okay, thank you. I have a question, Mayor. Yes, con uh, con uh, yes. something was mentioned about, and I see it also that according to the ordinance that we uh -huh. that we approved a few weeks ago, that it's who decides on their exemplary um, work ethics or what sits exemplary. Who decides that? Who says that they're exemplary? I, I'm just curious to know who. Oh, go ahead, legal counsel. Um, council Member Baca, the City Council has to decide whether or not they're exemplary or not. It would have to be a vote by the City Council, and uh, three people would have to vote in the affirmative to um, make them exemplary. Okay, so it's not something like the Highway Patrol or the Police Department or whoever regulates the, the towing, uh, like a committee or something? Uh, no, Council Member Baca. In fact, uh, for all intents and purposes, we've taken the Police Department out of the process. Oh, okay. um, based on recommendations and so forth. So it would be the city council that's going to make that recommendation, not anybody else. Okay. I'm just curious because I, you know, I, I'm sure I'll get 100 questions tomorrow, and that's probably going to be one of them, that who decides their, exem their exemplary status is what I'm trying to say. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you very much. At this point, I will move for adjournment. Well, Mayor, just yes. for clarification, oh, so we're voting on two, right? We went with the direct staff. To do the RFP, just to be clear, because I want that to be what, you know, the last thing people hear. I don't want to confuse the audience. We're voting on two to go to RFP. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you very uh, much. Mayor, yes. just, are we at the end of the meeting here? Yes, we are, sir. Okay. I just wanted to show a couple of slides here on some of the achievements that the city's had. If we could put those slides up. Uh, so we're continuing. You can see if you drive around the city, we have residential street uh, rehabilitation. We've completed street re rehabilitation work on 10 residential streets, including resurfacing of Ramona Boulevard from Main Avenue to Bogart Street with rubberized asphalt. Uh, the rehab of 356,000 square feet of roadway using a total of 4,400 tons of asphalt material. Rubberized material used from uh, the recycled California used tires which diverted approximately 2,400 waste tires uh, landfills. Construction of 10 build-outs and 33 ADA-compliant curb ramps per the city's safe route to school master plan near the Tracy Elementary. These improvements make it safer for students to walk to and from school. Next slide. Uh, our Arbor Day event, uh, the event provided an interactive resource fair, activities, games, and raffle prizes. Uh, 12 students from throughout the Ballin Park Unified School District were recognized as art contest winners. Waste management provided over 20 yard tons of, of mulch as a giveaway to the general public, serving over 250 uh, participants. And by the way, uh, Manny Crew, I left my bag of mulch out there. Hopefully you guys <laughs> saved it. Okay. A tree dedication ceremony was conducted in honor of Ms. Lillian Moore and Mr. Rudy Escalera, who both served Ballin Park for many years of federal contributions and volunteerism towards uh, the community. So uh, thank you, Mayor, for that. Uh, thank you very much. At this, yes, uh, Council Member Cruz sorry, Baca. I, yes, ma'am. Sorry, I'm just going to. I'm sorry I was not able to attend the Arbor Day celebration. I was at a 
uh, convention, uh, but um, I, I think Sam um, should announce about, I'm sure it'll be on the website if it isn't already, I didn't look, um, about the tree giveaway. Oh, that's right. And uh, so right. forth, which is very exciting. Big time. Uh, he, I did get the text or the email, and I did make a couple of suggestions for people that would like some of those trees. So it, could you please explain it to the residents about the, the tree? I don't know if there's any left, but no, for the sure. trees. Sure. So it's part of a uh, tree planting grant that we received from uh, the uh, Hilda Solis' office. Uh, but we were uh, present at Arbor Day. Public Works had a booth along with the San Gabriel Conservation uh, core. Uh, we were there uh, offering trees, free trees, to residents to plant and maintain, in, uh, you know, in front of their property. Uh, we 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 got a pretty good feedback. We got over 35 signups, and we're going to be putting that up in the website. We have a lot of other locations where we're going to be doing that. And the core was there actually recruiting for uh, jobs for BP residents. So it was a good turnout. Uh, we passed out flyers, and the information will be on the website soon. Oh, thank you. And, and I know that it's a, uh, it's a wonderful celebration. Like I said, unfortunately, I wasn't able to. But thank you very much to staff. And I know I saw, I think, a couple of days before, I saw our public works guys digging the holes or making the holes, whatever you call it, to get ready for the tree planting. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. At this point, I like move for adjournment. That's my motion. I'll second it. Sec any objections? See none. Good evening. Viva Baldwin Park. And Mayor, don't forget, yes. May 12th is the prayer march. Oh, that's right. That's yes, right. May starting 12th. from, Thank you. Uh, Pastor, from Pastor Jackson's, Jackson's church and walking to New Beginnings. Thank you. I know we adjourned, but that's very important. And happy Mother's Day, everybody. Mayor March. It's Mother's Day. You got any plans? Like Mother's Day, your mom, your wife? I have a friend that sometimes when I ask her, she says, when I when I have asked her in the past about her mother-in-law, because her mother had passed away a long time.